Okay, Sum, are we, uh, we live on uh, TV now? Jake out there or Tim? You guys hear me there, Paul and Lyndon stuff? Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you, Brad. Full okay. community TV. There you go. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Welcome everybody. I'm gonna call the uh, virtual meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order for October 7th, 2020. Um, I have a preamble I'm gonna read that we usually do here. Good evening, as chairman of the Wolfboro Board of Selectmen, I'm declaring that an emergency exists and I'm invoking the provisions of RSA 91-A colon two three B. Federal, state, local officials have determined the gatherings of 10 or more people pose a substantial risk to our community and is continuing efforts to combat the spread of COVID-19. <clears throat> in concurring with their determination, I also find that this meeting is imperative to the continued operation of town government and services, which are vital to public safety and confidence during this emergency. As such, this meeting will be conducted without a quorum of this body physically present in the same location. At this time, I also welcome members of the public accessing this meeting remotely. Even though this meeting is being conducted in a unique manner under unusual circumstances, the usual rules of conduct and decorum apply. Any person found to be disrupting this meeting will be asked to cease the disruption. Should this disruptive behavior continue thereafter, that person will be removed from this meeting. <clears throat> Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. So we'll start the meeting by taking roll call attendance. And when each member states the name, please state whether there is anyone in the room with you during the meeting that's required under the right to know law. Um, let me start with Linda. I'm in I'm in a room by myself in my house. And I'm here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Paul. Good evening. Uh, I'm in a room by myself. Uh, Dave Bowers. I'm in a room with wife Christy, not too far away. Dave. Uh, Dave Senecal? Yeah, I'm in a room by myself, but uh, you might see a dog run through now and then. Thank you. And I'm Brad Harriman. I'm also here and in a room by myself. Okay. First item on the agenda. Uh, Mr. Pino, do we have a need for a uh, non-public session this evening? Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we do have need for non-public this evening under RSA 91A, colon three, Roman room rule two, lowercase a, public employee, uh, D, property transaction, and L, consideration of legal advice. Okay, thank you. Next on the agenda, consideration of minutes. We'll start off with the September 9th, uh, 2020 special meeting minutes. Do we have any corrections or comments on these? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I'm to entertain a motion to approve them. Accept them as a written. Second. Motion a second to approve the minutes of September 9th. Any other discussion? Do a roll call vote. Linda? Yes. Paul? Yes. Uh, Dave Bowers? Yes. Dave Senecal? Yes. Thank you. And Brad Herman votes yes also. Next ones we have are for September 16th, 2020. Do we have any comments or corrections on these? Linda. Yes, on uh, page nine, the second paragraph from the bottom, second sentence, it should be not fall document, but full document. And then on page oh and also on the top of that page uh first paragraph second sentence first word should be taxpayer selectmen should be crossed out and then on page 16 the fourth line down it's it starts it seems like the doc and it's the word expansion should be in there the DOC expansion program uh, project. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have anything? I'm good. All right, I'd entertain a motion for these minutes. Move to so approve the amendment. 
<clears throat> second. We have a we have a motion and a second to approve the September 16th minutes as amended. Do roll call vote, Linda. Yes. Uh, Paul. Yes. Uh, Dave Bowers. Yes. Dave Seneco. Yes. And Brad Harmonich. Yes, also. Now the minute meetings for September 23rd, 2020. Are we just? Oh, on the 20. Okay, I'm on the wrong one. Agency. Eight, eight. And it is the paragraph other business, and it's the second line down. It should say RSA 47 dash one. And that's all I have. Okay. Anything else from anybody? I'd entertain a motion for these for the minutes for the 23rd of September. So moved as amended. Second. Motion in the second to approve the minutes of September 23rd. Can I have a roll call vote, Linda? Yes. All? Yes. Uh, Dave Bowers? Yes. Dave Senecal? Yes. And Brad Harriman votes yes also. Okay, we have here minutes for May 27th. These must be probably amended at some point here, I'm, say, I'm thinking how. Page yeah, eight. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, this, this is the housekeeping issue oh. um, related to um, being able to apply for the gopher funds. Um, mm -hmm. Through the state um, so that I can sign the document moving forward and it just clarifies that right. as you had voted. Okay. So do we need to do a motion and a approval on the amended version of the amended statement here? Or are we good to go with these as is? Uh, that would be correct. You should probably make a motion to amend Except as amended. Okay. I'll move that we accept the May 27th, 2020 minutes as amended. Second. Motion second to approve them as amended for May 27th. Roll call vote, Linda. Yes. Uh, Paul. Yes, sir. Uh, Dave Bowers. Yes. And Dave Senecal. Yes. And Brad votes yes also. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Okay, next on we have a couple of have two, three public hearings tonight. The first one being um, public hearing to consider a grant to grant an easement for a minor encroachment of the Latshaw building owned by Cross Neck Road Inc. into Lake Lake Avenue, pursuant to Selectman's authority under RSA 41 colon 14 dash. A. Do we have somebody here that's going to speak to us about this, or are you going to present it to us, Mr. Mr. Pineo? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have had this uh, reviewed by Attorney Puffer. Um, he did send back some some recommendations, and I believe Attorney DeWilder is here to speak on behalf. Okay. Kurt, do you want to? weigh in on this with us at all or? yes thank you um hello everybody so not a lot to say here because I, I i i think it's pretty straightforward the southwest corner of what's known as the latchaw building um which is uh, people know it is where the joe green's restaurant is located um encroaches into the town's right of way in, in a, a minor fashion um the building is under contract for sale uh, of course, this encroachment creates a title issue. So what we're trying to do is clean up the title issue. Um, it is uh, a very minor encroachment. Um, can't really move the building. And uh, so we're asking the town to uh, help us clean this issue up by the granting of the easement. I have drafted the easement. I understand that attorney Puffer has reviewed it and uh, is uh, 
he has no objections to the way that it is put together. It's been provided to the town. So we'd ask that we go th through night one tonight of the two-part process of granting that easement. Thank you, Barrett. Um, yes, as he mentioned, this is gonna be a, uh, there'll be two public hearings on this one tonight and one two weeks from tonight. Uh, so this is obviously the first one. So at this time, I will open the public hearing. Um, do we have anybody that would like to speak speak to this? I see nobody out in the public that wants to speak to this. So I will um, close the public hearing and also note to everybody that uh, um, the next public hearing will be on October 21st. Um, we'll be bringing this up for our second public hearing, at which time it'll be opened up and and uh, we'll deal, deal with it at that time. Board members, do we have any questions or comments uh, at this time? Linda. Yeah, when we were given the package for this easement, there was a picture of the tax map, which makes it very confusing. Kurt, am I correct? The only change is just where that corner of that building is. Yes, that's correct. And uh, although I, I I don't want to get too into, far into the weeds here about the tax map, I, I have a tendency to digress sometimes, but uh, it appears that the tax map is somewhat uh, inaccurate in its depiction of the property. So. Okay, so what we really are dealing with is this uh, plan, which is a survey plan by Correct. White Mountain, is the one we're yes. talking about. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions on this one? Okay, so we'll, we will have this on our agenda on uh, October 21st and, uh, and uh, go with Go ahead, take a look at it then and make a decision. Thank you, Kurt. Great. Thank you, guys. Yep. Bye. Good, good. Bye. Bye. Okay, our next uh, public hearing is going to be for the New Hampshire Lakes Region Pickleball Club to host their annual pickleball tournament September 10th to 12th, 2021, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Foss Field Courts on Laner Street. Um, I have to admit, when I first read this quickly, I said, why, this is already October, why are we looking at something that happened last month, but uh, then I realized we're talking next year, so <laughs> it took a minute to sink in. Uh, Joe, would you like to uh, speak to us about this tonight? Certainly, and thank you all for uh, entertaining the request. Yes, this would be the seventh annual gathering in Wolfboro. Uh, this most recent tournament, we had 202 players from New England, and because of COVID, we had to turn down more than 60 players coming from Canada, the West Coast, Florida. This has become an annual attraction out here. In fact, uh, as an anecdote, we had two couples from California get so disappointed because they couldn't come. They had planned their honeymoons around this annual event in Wolfboro, and they had to find some other place to go. But the, uh, we do draw a lot of people in a normal year from all over the United States and Canada. Next year, we hope to have more than 250, assuming that COVID is no longer, longer an issue. But it's a three-day event. We get a good cooperation from Wolfboro Parks. Uh, Stewart Ambulance is there every single day to help out if needed. We get support from many of the local businesses in town who either offer discounts or outright cash to attract people. And gratefully, we're able to fill most of the hotel rooms that have uh, openings for us, as well as the restaurants. So we're hopeful that the town will once again allow us to have this annual event which has become so popular in the new england area and i'm happy to answer any questions that you may have well, thank you joe and board members do we have any questions thanks for what you're doing yeah, Linda. yeah i just have one comment i'm sure joe you know this but uh about a week before the event we need a copy of your insurance I'm sure you don't have it now, but we should make that part of the motion that the permit is contingent upon that. Yes, Linda. In fact, we get two kinds of insurance, not only event insurance, but we also insure the players. And that's been provided by uh, Avery Insurance. We deliver that to Amy just about a week before. 
Uh, it seems like the company likes to do that the month of or shortly before the event rather than in advance. Yeah, that's fine. Just that needs to be part of our motion. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, this time I'll open the public hearing to anybody out there in the audience who would like to speak to us about this event. Since we don't have any out there, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, board members, any other questions or comments? Uh, if not, we'd entertain a motion. So moved. It'd be a motion contingent upon receiving the certificate of insurance, Dave? Yes. Yeah. So moved. Exactly. Okay. With, 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 um, and um, you um, probably um, also should put in any COVID 19 in case the in guidelines in case there's any at that period yes we will certainly do that approved with the various uh, amendments mentioned <laughs> thank you dave and paul did you second that i think i did okay thank you uh motion a second to approve uh um i'm here the pickleball tournament for next next year on september 10th through the 12th any other discussion so you now have a roll call vote, Linda? Yes. Uh, Paul? Yes. Uh, Dave Bowers? Yes. Dave Senecal? Yes. And Brad Harron votes yes also. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, folks. Thanks, have Joe. a good evening. See you later. Thank you very much for your approving this process. Thank you, sir. Okay, next public hearing we have is for the Abenaki Ski Team to host the annual Ski and Skates uh, sale on November 14th, 2020. Setup will be on November 13th, 2020 from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Fossfield Pavilion. We have somebody here to speak to us about this one. Yes, hello, this is Anne DeBeer. I'm here to speak to you about this. Okay. Like to tell us a little um, bit about it? <laughs> sure. So, you know, um, usually this annual ski and skate sale is held at um, the Kingswood High School, and this year they're not uh, having any outside events, which is understandable, of course. So, um, we've done some research. A lot of the ski and skate swaps are carrying on in an outdoor environment um, to abide you know by all the rules of social distancing masks airflow and that kind of thing so um we christine collins suggested uh perhaps the Fossfield pavilion and the grass grassy area to the left of that uh, would be a good option and um the ski shops that sell their items there were willing to provide to bring their tents and set up and <clears throat> and put on a safe sale so that's what i'm seeking approval on um if that, that i think there's gonna be a lot of outdoor wreck this year because of the current portable items to the public um in town and provide that service uh, that we do at the scan skate so that's my request all right, thank you. Um, so at this time, I'll open up the public hearing to anybody out in the audience that would like to ask questions or speak to us about this. Okay, seeing there's nobody out there speaking to us, I'll close the public hearing. Board members, do we have any questions or comments? Linda. I just have a comment. Uh, Annie, are you going to use any kind of a rain date, or is it rain or shine? No, we're going to do rain or shine. We will have the tent, and we'll utilize um, the cover of the pavilion area itself. And we're going to we're going to do rain or shine. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And I think we probably, as we just spoke about with with Joe at the previous one, there we. Um, Part of our motion of when we go to make one would probably include any uh, COVID-19 guidelines in it if they're, well, they will be in place for this one anyway. So, um, yeah, it's next year, but 
Do we have any other questions or comments? Are we ready for a motion? I'll move to approve a temporary event permit application for the Abenaki ski team to host the annual ski and skate on November 14th, set up November 13th from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at Foss Field, contingent upon following Governor Sununu's emergency COVID-19 orders and the town received the a insurance rider. I'll second that. Um, motion to second. Any discussion? Yeah, Brad. Seeing none, we'll have a yes, Dave. I think Linda said seven to seven. It's seven to four. Oh, I meant seven to four. Okay, I could have okay. said okay. <laughs> yep. Thank, thank you. So we'll have a roll call vote. Uh, Linda? Yes. Paul? Yes. Uh, Dave Bowers? Yes. Dave Senecal? Yes. And Brad votes yes also. So good luck with that. Hope for good weather, okay? <laughs> thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Next item on our agenda is public input, limited to three minutes per person, not to exceed 15 minutes. Do we have anybody out here that would like to speak to us during the public input session here? Did somebody there? Did you see a hand go? Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Could you just? State your name for the record and uh your volume isn't up enough. We can't hear you there, the Shannons. Try it now. Yeah, still not hearing anything. They can type a question in the chat if they want to. Or they can use the telephone call number. Yeah, we're not hearing anything, so. There is a phone number to call in on. Would you like to do that? You can speak to us. I can read the phone number to you if you want to jot it down and call. It's 786 535 Do I want to read the number again? It is one seven eight six five three five three two one one. And then the X, I think they need a code. And I think they need okay, to put in code four four seven. Five five zero two six one. Hi, can anyone hear us? Yes. Yay. Yay. You can you hear us? <laughs> I, oh my goodness. Okay, I'm sure I'm out of time. Isn't uh, it great? Once we got once Jim got out of the picture, it was great. Things got better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um this is I'm Elizabeth Shannon. This is my husband, Jim Shannon. He works for the town. You might recognize him. Um, I'm a bit, bit premature because I do not have a permit filled out and I'm going to. Um, I would just need to feel everybody out 
um, beforehand because I would probably run out of time to purchase what I would like. Um, I would like to submit a permit to hand out candy at the Clark Museum um, on Halloween. I know you haven't come to any conclusions about that yet, so I'm uh, putting it out there so you can mull it out. Um, we would like to set up a display on the inside of the fence where we would not have any children um, enter that area. Um, we wanted to stage up a few uh, scenes such as witches, skeletons, little graveyards. Um, we have some props. Um, we would not be using any candles. Uh, we would like to light a path uh, so the kids could adhere to CDC guidelines of distancing. We would all be wearing masks. Um, we would be handing out candy through a chute, um, so no one is candy and the kids would be far away. Um, I did speak to the president of the Historical Society of Clark uh, Museum, and she toured with us and we laid out uh, to her where we'd like to put everything. She thought it was a great idea because she was a teacher and um, I'm also on the New Hampshire Board of uh, Committee for Rare Disease, so I do understand uh, the effects of social uh, isolation and the stress that comes from having uh, routines upended. Um, I certainly wouldn't do this without permission, and uh, like I said, I do need time to submit an actual permit. I've never done that before. Um, um, and also the insurance, we would be willing to pay for the cost of that. We would also be purchasing all the candy ourselves. Uh, we would only do this during the trick-or-treat hours. Uh, we would be setting this up and also taking it down. Um, as I said, we would not be using any flammable objects. Uh, we'd like to light a path using little battery-operated candles. Um, and uh, just set up some spots to keep everyone moving along. We could have a guide so the kids don't congregate. Um, we would not be getting near anybody. Um, I know that a lot of people are concerned about trick-or-treating this year. Um, we would just like to offer an option for parents to bring their kids. Um, I know usually they end up on the end of Main Street near the police station um, and in front of Huggins. I've always been a little concerned about the kids crossing the street in the dark with the costumes on. Um, I'm afraid they're going to get hit by a car. It's always been my fear, so I'm sort of cringing seeing them do that. So um, I. I only came up with this idea because of COVID and schools are closed. And I, I just really feel like they missed out on a lot. Um, I have seen a lot of craft fairs happen, a lot of adult orientated activities. And I feel like if those have been successfully pulled off, um, uh, you, maybe you guys could work with me so that I could figure out a way to do this uh, so everyone Safe. would enjoy it safely. And also I would um, just need some help with the permit process. Like I said, um, I know your next meeting is on October 21st. Um, it's really not enough time for me to get an idea if this would freak everybody out um, because I would have to um, purchase the candy and et cetera. So um, I'll end with that. If uh, Jim wanted to say anything. I'm not sure. Just our way to continue to give back to the community and put the kids first in this town and surrounding. Thank okay. you for your time. Is that good? All right. Yeah, thanks, guys, for the for the idea and stuff. As you, as you probably saw, this is on our agenda this evening to talk about a little later okay. on um, okay. with the uh, trick or treating and stuff. But uh, uh, board members, do we have any thoughts on this or at this time or do we want to bring it up, talk, talk about it during our discussion on Halloween, or I'm just not sure what logistics and, and you know liabilities and things like that being 
on town property too and stuff. So I don't really have a feel for it. You know, my feeling is we, we're going to talk about Halloween and then that will take care of um, where they go. My feeling is if they have the insurance, unless Jim thinks there's something else, that it would be like any other temporary event. And they can True. fill out, I'm sure Amy can help you fill out the permit or show them where to go get the permit. Yeah, um, okay. you know, we have a we have like a whole bunch of new business things to do. Would it make sense for us to uh, move this one from the last or last in the pile to the first in the pile and have the Halloween discussion up front? I think it makes sense. Because right now uh, uh, we got we got uh, the Halloween discussion as item H. And, and and if there's any unless anyone on the board objects, could we make that item A and then follow the sequence after that so we can kind of get to it? Anybody have any objection to that? I'm good with that. Everybody else good with that? I am. Mm -hmm. okay. Dave and Dave. I'm good with that. Yep. Okay. Especially with this candy involved. I'm great with it. If someone's <laughs> gonna talk about candy, I'm all over. <laughs> He's gonna gotta watch him, he'll be there the whole time. Exactly. I guess we move it up, which means we've got a couple of things to get through here and then we'll get right into it, uh, Liz and Jim, okay? Thank, Thank you very much. Yep. Okay, right. thanks. Do we have any other public input this evening on this part of the agenda before we move on? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to the bulk vote. Mr. Chairman, I need to have one removed. I okay. need, uh, or I, I can't vote on it, so we probably should remove it. Is the uh, C uh, 276 Pleasant Valley Road tax map 234 lot 7? And I'd like to make a motion that we remove that and vote separately on that. Okay. Do we have a second to that? Second. Motion second to remove the item for 276 Pleasant Valley Road from the both vote to be voted on separately. We'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Linda? Yes. Paul? Yes. Uh, Dave Senecal? Dave Bowers? Yes. Yes. And Pat Bochy? Yes, also. Okay. So now we'll have a, we have a motion on both vote. Minus that one item that we removed out of it. Brad, I have one other request. In this bulk vote is a um, statement about when the polls are going to be open and what the election, what we're going to be electing. It's the state of New Hampshire. It's the last one on it. On it and I'd like to see us um, read it so people hear that. Sure. I can either read it or if you have it, Brad, I think it would be good if you Bye. read it. Yep, I have it right in front of me here. The the warrant, right? We yep. have here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. I'll make sure this thing talks about the date and everything, what we're doing. November third. It's it's on the last page of it. It says oh. to the inhabitants. There we go. Yep. Let's we go. read the Stone Warrant first. Okay. Yeah. So one of the items on our bulk vote is a um, uh, statement about the uh, the election coming up. I'll read it so everybody knows it. It's to the inhabitants of the town of Wolfboro in the county of Carroll, New Hampshire. You are hereby notified to meet at the Great Hall in the town hall building on Tuesday, the third day of November, 2020. The polls will be open between the hours of 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. to act upon the following subjects. To bring your votes, to bring in your votes for president and vice president of the United States, governor, United States senator, United States representative, executive counselor, state senator, state representatives, and county officers. Uh, given under our hands and seal the seventh day of October in the year of our Lord. 2020. That, that's part of our bulk vote uh, this evening, so everybody is aware 
of the dates and times and uh hope we have a good turnout so thank you mr chairman said, can we... yes Just, yeah i'd like to make a motion that we approve uh the bulk vote items a through f inclusive minus uh the 276 pleasant valley road tax map 234 lot 7 vote i'll second that a motion second on the floor to approve the bulk vote minus that one item under C, which is was uh, 276 Pleasant Valley Road. Any other discussion? Seeing none, we'll have a roll call vote. Uh, Linda? Yes. Paul? Yes. Uh, Dave Seneca? Yes. Dave Bowers? Yes. And Brad Harriman with yes also. Now we'd entertain a motion for that one item for 276 Pleasant Valley Road. So move. Which is a, a denial for property tax credit exemption. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second for that item. Any other discussion? So you now have a roll call vote. Um, Linda, you, um, and Linda? I'm, abstain. I'm stepping down, so it should say yep. abstain, step down. Abstain, thank you. Paul? Yes. Uh, Dave Seneca? Yes. Dave Bowers? Yeah. And Brett Harriman, which yes also. All right, thank you. Now we have some uh, some board and committee appointments this evening. Um, Brad, I have a question for the board first. Are we sure. appointing long-term committees or are we appointing an ad hoc committee to work for a short period of time? Because the, the ones we have here, we're talking about term limits up to three years. And I, I didn't think these committees were gonna be long-term like three years. So I don't know where the, what the other selectmen felt. Well, since I was the one who yeah. teed it up. <laughs> Thanks, Linda. Uh, I'm, I, Amy, uh, I, I think, tried to do the right thing. She posted it out as a three-year on the website. It's now two years here. I think the DOC committee is probably a short-term ad hoc committee um, uh, situation. That's kind of the way I look at it. I think the uh, uh, the public safety complex building project is probably a multi-year uh committee activity the way i look at it that's my that's my perspective on it yeah i, I know I, I think i agree i think the, the the first two there could be ad hoc committees to be together as long as needed um mm -hmm. but wouldn't the trustee of the trust funds that does have a term on it anyway because we're moving a alternate to a full-time position but that would be a uh that being a term i think yeah, so on that one the doc's committee. talking about the two uh the the uh, doc committee and the public yeah. safety building where they were right. just yeah. committees we just set up the yeah. trustee yeah. issue is another uh yeah. issue and it's clear on the amount of time for that but these are these I thought were ad hoc committee. Standing mm -hmm. committees are usually where we give time limits, term yeah. limits. Yeah, I agree. I think it'd be uh, ad hoc committees. Dave, you, Dave or Dave, have any comments on what they interpret this to be? Well, I think all of that for me. I think both of these committees uh, would be ad hoc, and. Certainly the dock committee is not going to be very long. The public safety building could be a couple of years at least. Yeah, That's so I, I I, I'm in the same space. I, you know, when, when we originally spoke a few weeks back about constituting the dock committee, I think I mentioned that you know, we could probably, if we're, if we're good, we could probably wrap this thing up in a handful of meetings. So that to me would suggest ad hoc. Uh, I think, though, on the other on the other side, the public safety uh, situation. I think that's uh, that's probably got a little more wood to it. 
So, um, you know, whatever whatever makes sense for the board. It, look, should we do this? Should we just make the uh, doc committee ad hoc kind of agree that the doc committee is going to be an ad hoc committee? That's what it seems like. And I don't yeah. see us making a formal public safety building committee. That's a standing right. committee, and the others are ad hoc. I see this yeah. would go go three years. Once the building's up, that committee would no longer be. And that's my, my understanding of the difference between the committees. One's a standing committee that we know will be going for the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. These are committees that we we established to do a short-term project. And it may be three years. It could be five years. But at that point, after that project's done, the committee's done. Dissolved. So that was yeah, one of my thoughts. So they're both ad hoc. It's just the tenure uh, may be different for both. Is that kind of what you're saying, Linda? Yeah. I, I support that. My, uh, you, Dave? So I think basically, basically what I'm hearing is we'd probably like to remove the wording of the two-year term off the Public Safety Building Committee and the DOC Committee, correct? That's correct. That's what I was. Yeah, and it's Roger. And right. Amy, thank you for doing it anyways. That was probably yes, my best. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Yep. Thanks for doing it. Okay, it's always so hard I think we figure out what we want. <laughs> oh, here we are. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> the way I think I'd like to approach it, what we I'd like to do is the, the public safety building committee. We have one, two, three. Four four members on there. We can do I say we can't do all four of them. Introduce the names and stuff. If they're with us, they could speak to us. And then do one vote for the four of them. Does that sound good to everybody? You want to do them individually? I'm comfortable with doing all four of them. Okay. Both of them. All right. So I'll read off the names, and if any of these you know, any of these folks are with us this evening, they can uh, speak to us for a minute or two. We mm -hmm. have. Uh, I hope I don't butcher these names. Kevin <laughs> Sansenbacher, Warren Gould, Bob Tuffer. And Bob Lohman. Are any of these uh, folks with us this evening and want to say anything? Or, Mr. Chairman, I thought I saw uh, Kevin. Kevin is there. There he is. He's on the. He's on us. There he is. He's out there somewhere. Kevin. Yes, I'm, I'm here. I'm just. I'm just glad to have the opportunity to serve the, the town and any way I can. So uh, thank you for pointing me to this committee. If it goes forward with the vote. Thank you, Kevin. Mr. Chairman, uh, we we have the benefit of a uh, retired uh, uh, police chief. Um, although he didn't uh, doesn't come from New Hampshire, we're gonna we're gonna give him a hall pass on that. But he has uh, he's joined us, so we have the benefit of his of his background uh, for this committee. That's it's great to have him on board. Who is that, Paul? Kevin. Thank you. Okay, does somebody would somebody like to make a motion to appoint these uh, these four gentlemen to the uh, the Public Safety Building Committee? Mr. Chairman, I would oh, uh, like to make a yep so move to appoint these four. Second. I have a motion a second to approve these to approve uh, Kevin Warren and the two Bobs to the uh, Public Safety Building Committee. Any discussion? Seeing none, do roll call vote. Linda. Yes. Yes. Paul. Yes. Uh, Dave Seneca? Yes. Dave Bowers? Yes. And Brad Harrell votes yes also. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, thank you gentlemen. We appreciate your, your willingness to serve and uh, look forward to seeing where this goes. Mr. Chairman. Okay, the next committee we have is the DOC Committee. <laughs> we have some names here Adam Dow, John Thurston. Brian Black, Bob Tuffer, and an amended agenda here. I had Dave Mayer added into this also. Everybody have that? I have uh, another one, Mary DeVries. Yeah, Mary DeVries, yep. Okay. And Mary DeVries, and I missed that one. That came in later. Late arrival, at the deadline. <laughs> okay. Thought we, thought we didn't want to deal with those. <laughs> 
So um, are any of these folks here with us this evening and want to speak to us before we uh, have a motion and a, and a vote and stuff? Hmm. Sounds pretty quiet out there, so. Adam did Quite send ahead. me a regret shortly before the meeting. Yeah, thanks okay. for that. Yes, Adam I did see that. Another commitment tonight. Mm -hmm. So I'd entertain Chairman. a motion for these. Yes, Mary go ahead. Uh, Mary DeVries here, and thank you for the consideration to add me to this group. And it's been a priority and continues to be a priority of our Chamber of Commerce Economic Development Committee. And I also would welcome the opportunity to help with communicating uh, this strategy be behind the group to the business community. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, thanks, Mary. Anybody else out there? Or? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that we approve the slate of candidates uh, that were just referenced for the uh, ad hoc doc committee. I'll second that. Motion a second. Do we have any other discussion? Seeing none, have a roll call vote. Linda? Yes. Uh, Paul? Yes. Dave Senecal? Yes. Uh, Dave Bowers? Yes. And Brad votes yes also. Mr. Chairman? Thank, well, first of all, I want to thank, thank this group of people, too, for volunteering to be on the doc committee. Um, Paul. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, just so, so that uh, the teams who are here, uh, we've let everybody know on both committees of the, uh, of the days uh, and times. Uh, the uh, Public Safety Building Project Committee is going to be meeting on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. And the uh, DOC Committee meeting on Mondays at 10 a.m. Uh, tomorrow, I, uh, unless there's objection, I'm going to have uh, Amy uh, notice for the first meeting to take place next week, if that's permissible. I think we can do that. Um, both, uh, yep. So for both uh, the docs committee and for the um, public safety complex, and unless there's again any objection, my uh, my strong feeling, at least initially, is we should do this whole thing virtually, so we don't have to get it, so that we can get at the first meeting, we can get some preferences by people as to whether they want to have a hybrid uh, discussion or not. So the first meeting will be virtual, and we'll get all of that stuff out, including a a straw dog agenda for everybody to look at. Thank you, Brad. I appreciate the time. All right. Thanks, Paul. Okay. The next one we have is for our trustees of the trust funds. Um, we have a uh, letter of resignation for from Bree Chouette. Um, is going to be resigning from the trustees of the trust funds. Um, first of all, I want to thank her for the years that she's served here with us on that. And then we have an appointment for Karen Haskell, who is a now an alternate, will be moved to a full-time member. So, do we need to first have a motion to accept um, resignation letter from from Bree? So moved. Second. Motion and second to accept with regret the resignation from Bree. Have a roll call vote. Uh, Linda. Yes. Paul? Yes. Dave Senecal? Yes. Dave Bowers? Yes. And Brad Aaron votes yes also. So now we have uh, Karen Haskell to be appointed, and I see she's on with us this evening. Would you like to say anything? Have any comments, Karen? No, I'm happy to do this. I've been an alternate for a couple of years, and uh, Barbara Lobdell asked if I would uh, fill out Bree's term, which I think is over in March, and then someone will likely run for that position. Okay, thank you. Move yeah, to March of 2021, right? I think it's 22. Okay. It's 22. Paperwork, I saw it. You said. Uh, I think what it is, uh, we have to, we can appoint somebody until the next election. Ah, okay. Right. 
Okay, I'll we'll make a motion we'd like to, to make employ a... Karen Haskell as a member to the trustees of trust funds or trustee until of the trust funds until March of 2021. March of 2021. Right. Second. Motion a second. Um, any other discussion? Linda? Linda? Yes. Paul? Yes. Dave Seneca? Yes. Dave Bowers? Yes. And Brad votes yes also. So thank you, Karen. Appreciate it. Thanks, Karen. Thank you, Karen. You're very welcome. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our new business. And as we discussed before, we're going to move the discussion for Halloween trick or treat to the top of the list. So we'll put that on the table right now for for a discussion. Um, I did, I think most of us have probably seen or heard that there was a, I don't know if it was on Facebook or something there that uh, the police chief had kind of announced that as far as he was concerned, Halloween was gonna go on and stuff. And um, we'd already had it on our previous meetings, agendas to bring this up for discussion amongst ourselves, have a discussion on this. So that's where we're at tonight with it anyway. So what does the board think or how do we wanna react or not react, but how do we wanna move forward with the Halloween for the town of Wolfboro? Mr. Chairman, if I may. Certainly, Mr. Pineo. So um, there's been a lot of uh, dialogue um, at the state level regarding Halloween. Um, and it, it's a fairly consistent message. Um, they are, they, there's no um, real push to cancel Halloween. Um, the thought process is, to um, put in place um, some protective measures, work with the families to try and promote a um, healthy and safe Halloween. Um, what they, they're meaning by this is um, trying to empower the families, uh, the parents to encourage social distancing of the people who are trick-or-treating. Um, try to look at the areas where we may be having trick-or-treating and attempt to create one-way traffic, um, put traffic as much as we possibly can. Um, obviously look at some defined times as far as when trick-or-treat should happen. Um, one of the things that they are also encouraging is to obviously heavy utilization of hand sanitizer. They are not encouraging the use of gloves in any fashion. Um, and avoiding large groups. That is one of the key takeaways. Um, to try and stay in your, your small family groups and um, go out, enjoy Halloween, um, be safe about it, be respectful. If people um, don't have their lights on, uh, their outdoor lights on, then you probably shouldn't be going to their residence trick-or-treating. Um, respect those people who may not that um, type of activity happening this year. Um, I did have a conversation with both the fire chief and the police chief. Um, they are both in favor of going forward with Halloween. Um, with that said, um, I hand it over to you as the policymakers in town um, to make a decision as to the direction we should head. All right, Brad. thank you, Jim. Yes, Linda. Yeah, I'm willing to weigh in here. My feeling is we go on with trick or treat. It's just like with the school system. You had the up the choice to homeschool, to go remote or to go hybrid. Parents have the choice to go trick-or-treating or not go trick-or-treating. So I feel it's just the same thing we did is we put five minute parking spaces, we put put tables out, it, it's to enable that to happen and let people make their choice on that. I do feel 
that we need to get safety measures up on our town Facebook and on our website and hopefully get a list to get something in the paper. Our good rules for a safe Halloween. Me too. I, I agree with everything my colleague just said. I think the, uh, you know, Jim, you very capably rattled off a set of uh, conditions and uh, I think it would be great if we could uh, capture those. Uh, we use our public safety uh, Facebook asset because the chief does tend to put things out, but I think it ought to be you know, a consistent one message from uh, all of us just going out for community television, sitting on the front page of, uh, of the town uh, website, PD, fire department, whatever. But I think those things ought to get put together and out the door, not just once, but repeatedly, so that it kind of, and, and Mary, uh, I know Mary can help us, you know, we, we get it into the, you know, maybe in the stores where, you know, kind of a piece of paper that people can pick up and look at, so that uh, everybody knows what the rules are. And I agree with you, uh, Linda, and I agree with Jim, we have to be respectful. If somebody says, listen, I'm not, I don't want, I, I want, I want to keep the door shut and the lights off, then that's the way it is. Um, but as long as we all exercise reasonable precaution, uh, I, I'd be supportive of stepping forward here. I agree too. I think the, uh, um, I think the families, especially the smaller kids, the parents are going to be cautious anyway. They're going to try and I'm sure they're going to keep their uh, families together in smaller groups and uh, they'd respect, you know, if there's somebody at that door there, they'd hold back until they clear out and they'd go in. Um, you yeah, know, there's going to be a lot of common sense going on here. So. Um, uh, I agree. I think we should go forward with it and uh, let the people make the choices if they want to participate or not. Anybody else have any comments? So now we have to uh, table the question of the uh, of uh, of the Shannons. Well, I, I think one of the other issues that I would like to be able to um, get some comfort around is um, number one, verifying that we are gonna do it on the 31st, which is a Saturday night, and also to try and uh, establish a block of hours when it's gonna be permitted. Usually it's been from five to seven. There's been yeah, always right. been a block of hours in the town and when you trick or treat, you usually okay. start at five, so that they have some time before it gets pitch dark to go around and by seven. And we've always had the rule, if the light's out, they're not giving up can giving out candy. And I've got an email from one person who lives on uh, Clark Road said they aren't going to do it. And that's okay. Right. Yeah, that's that's right. a choice. That's what we're allowing to happen is that choice. In terms of the Shannons, I need to know, know how Jim and the town feels about the use of that property and this is a tent we're kind of saying like a temporary event but they're not a 501c3 they're not a pro uh, non-profit so right. that's the only issue I see with granting a temporary uh, event permit but we could just grant them the ability to do it so I don't know how you feel Jim in terms of the town so I, I do know that this um came in front of us uh, today. Um, my, my, my real concern about this one is, um, as Mrs. Shannon mentioned, um, people crossing the road, the fire department and police department traditionally have a um, very well attended event where they hand out candy at the public safety building. Um, it could get a little bit um, busy if we have two large scale events taking place there. Um, the other thing that I would just wanna do um, with the Shannons is um, be sure that this is run by, run through the office of the fire chief. Um, there are a lot of concerns with Halloween type events, um, ensuring that they're they're safe um that you know granted it is outside but ensuring that there's no blockage of means of egress um and whatnot 
so I, I would just encourage that if we do look at that, um, that we we co coordinate this with the fire department and the police department. Well, we all know that Clark Road and East Clark Road are the main trick or treat areas, and then you go down uh, South Main Street and somewhere as you cross over and you come up. Um, the other side, and that has been the pattern of where the majority of people have traveled. Mm -hmm. So it is in a very heavily congested area where everybody comes to trick or treat. But that's going to be through, to me, it'll be throughout Park Road. That's the decision I think parents are going to have to make um, on how much of a crowd they want to get into. But I, I think it definitely should go through the fire department. I'm, I'm absolutely agree with Jim on that. Yeah, I do. I'm just not clear. I'm not clear as to what I, I, I've heard the issues and, and they're all good issues, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out what. So what? How do we get to a decision that says to the Shannons? Yeah or no? What, what's the what's the right path there? Kim, Jim, if we could direct them coming in, if they could do it some way that they came in and went around and never came out onto South Main Street. You know, that we keep them in that. So the kids aren't out lining up all around there. If it came in that way, it might be safer. Um, you mean in Clark Road, like where the uh, where the farmer's market is and then come out yeah, and then yeah, hook down yeah. to us? Yeah. Come in somewhere is that back way opposed to having people line up. What I see is you have people waiting to get in. So they're lining up on the sidewalk and then you've got the people who want to go on right. down the sidewalk to go to something um further down and so yeah. if they were not in the sidewalk if the entrance came from the park side mm. you know, yeah that, I, I mean i can i can certainly reach out to the fire chief tomorrow um make <laughs> those connections happen so that they can um create a plan that may work um, as well. Um, probably makes a lot of sense to get the the police chief involved as far as you know um, flow of of the trick or treaters to try and um, help facilitate that moving forward. So I, I can initiate those contacts tomorrow and um, see what we can come up with with for for a plan that may work um, for everybody involved. And you know if if we can take and and work with the Shannons on this um, wonderful idea. Um, it may take some of that burden off of um, some of those homes that get inundated on Clark Road, which would be um, helpful, I think. Could we, um, Jim, because we have, um, as the Shannon said, you know, they can't wait till the 21st to actually have their decision made and go from there. We have some, Budget committee meetings coming up next week. Could we, once we hear from uh, you know the chief there at the fire department, could we put this on, add it onto an agenda at our one of our budget committee meetings to once we get all this information back to give them the yes or no on it next week at some point, so not waiting till the very end. I have no issue with that as long as the board is is okay with that direction. It's great. Yeah, I, I think it's yeah, I think it's great. I mean, we I think it's awesome. I mean, they're they're saying, hey, we want to make we want to help. We, we need a decision. I think you're doing the right thing. Get uh, get the get the fire chief and the police chief together. We get we get some clarity there. And Tuesday night, uh, I think isn't that Tuesday night our next uh, novena for uh, budget? It is Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, the light bulb. Thursday, isn't it? Or Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday, 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 Tuesday next night. Week. We owe the Shannons an answer, and we should be able to deliver it. Thank you. Jim? Uh, I, I would just state that I think it might make a little bit more sense to push it to Thursday. And the only reason I say that is um, I believe Monday is a holiday. Yeah, it's it, we right. have it on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, in 13th, 14th. So either Tuesday or Wednesday, we owe the Shannons an answer. Um, yeah. And as, as long as that, you know, yeah. I, well, I can absolutely can. strive for a Wednesday. No, it's, it, no, I'm looking at the book. No, it is Thursday. I was right Thursday. the first time. Tuesday and Thursday. Yep. Yep. Okay. So let's do it. Let's do it Thursday night. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
And do we want to have a motion and to support and for the Halloween trick or treating for um, on the 31st from 5 to 7 p.m.? Would somebody like to make that motion? So moved. Second. Second. Third. Motion is second to have Halloween on October 31st from 5 to 7 p.m. Roll call vote. Linda? Yes. Paul? Yes. Dave Seneca? Yes. Uh, Dave Bowers? Let's see, I'm sitting in his chair there. Uh, Brad votes yes also. Okay. That sound good. So we'll you know, we'll deal with we'll deal with, we'll address the uh, the Shannon's wish on uh, next Thursday. Okay. Next on our agenda is uh, covenant to protect public benefit pursuant to RSA seventy nine E, the Samuel Avery House. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm yes. I'm not sure that Mr. Cook is here this evening. Um, but you may recall uh, this spring he came in front of the board um, regarding the um, easement for the tax relief incentive. Um, we have brought this um, through legal counsel for review. Um, Attorney Puffer has um, completed the document and where he is um, approaching substantial completion of the work. Um, we feel that this is a timely um, opportunity to bring it in front of the board. I believe we saw an email go, go around that he, uh, that he had no objections to it after he reviewed it and stuff. He was in agreement with it. And if I, 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 am I correct that we're going to use as the base the evaluation, um, the reevaluation that happens in 2020? That is my understanding, Linda, correct. Okay. That should be contained in the motion. You could make the motion, Paul. I, I, I can't begin to even think about how to do it. I've been sitting there trying to figure out what I want to say, and I'm not going to. I'm going to make you do it. Before that happens, I think we all we all should recognize that the, that the Cook family, the Cooks have just, wow, uh, that part of town, uh, wow. And uh, congratulations to them. Uh, they also were on um, a tank away uh, version of Boston Chronicle the other night. Um, they're great. They've really done a great thing for us. So uh, having said that, Dave, now it's your turn to make a motion. Okay, I move that we approve the covenant to protect public benefit pursuant to RSA 79-E, Samuel Avery House, LLC. And that's at uh, 84 South Main Street. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Dave. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? So you now do a roll call vote. Uh, Linda? I think we just lost Linda. Yeah. He's popped off my screen. And Brad, you're you've gone uh, you've gone uh, to plaid. I'm locked up, aren't I? <laughs> Rigor mortis is setting into something. <laughs> Paul. Yes. Uh, Dave Bowers. Yes. Dave Seneca. Yes. And Brad votes yes also. I don't know about where you are, but my my lights just blinked on and off a few seconds ago, and that's about the same time we lost Linda. So, I wonder if something might have come down. But anyway, we'll move on. It's the internet gremlins. Okay, next on our agenda is a uh, intermunicipal agreement between Tuftoboro and Wolfboro. 
for the it's obviously for the uh, aquatic nuisance plant control. Dave Ford here. This is probably something Linda was going to talk about, I would imagine. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, that's correct. Linda was going to speak to this. Um, we basically have taken the existing uh, intermunicipal agreement. Um, we've reviewed it. We've updated it. Um, it's been reviewed uh, by legal counsel. Um, so the we should be able to go ahead and accept this um, for the term expiring um, September 30th, 2025. Any comments or discussion from the board? Seeing that, I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll move to authorize the Wolfboro Board of Selectmen Chairman to sign the intermunicipal agreement between Tuftsonboro and Wolfboro with the provisions of aquatic nuisance plant control, the term expiring on 30 September 2025. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, we'll have a roll call vote. Uh, Paul? Me? Paul, oh, yes. Yes. Dave Senecal? Yes. Dave Bowers? Yes. Brad votes yes. And Linda, have you gotten back on with us at all? Linda yeah, just uh, texted me and asked me if I had power. So I think that uh, I think there's a power problem over in your neighborhood. Yep. So I think we've lost our beloved Linda Murray. Yep, I think so. So I Mr. Chairman, blinked on and off. Yes. The the only real change to this agreement is um, the original agreement included Moultonboro. Moultonboro has withdrawn. And that is the only major change to the agreement. So, any reason, any reason okay. why, Jim? It was they withdrew fairly early on, Paul. Yeah, it's been quite a few years. Oh, okay. Yep. I still okay, have next power down here. Yep. I I have no power. I'm on the phone now. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Okay, we're on to introduction of the codes officer. Mr. Pinio, are you going to do this one for us? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I am um, very excited to um, let you, the I board, see. know what you're already aware of um, and the citizens know that we have um, had the opportunity to attract a very highly qualified um, codes official to come to work for the town of Wolfboro. Um, he can sell himself a lot better than I can. He, he did that through the interview process. You're so doing fine, Jim. Will... Keep going. <laughs> so without any further ado, I'll hand it over to Steve and he can introduce you himself to you and give you a little bit of his background. Steve? All right. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and board. Um, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, Ooh, how to sell myself. I didn't do a very good job of that because they hired me. Um, I have a long history with buildings. Um, I've been an architect for 15 years. I had my own business in Connecticut. Um, I, I lost that at the turn of the 2007 when the market started crashing. And at that point, I became a building inspector and code enforcement officer. I've spent the last nine years in Belmont. And... Uh, Figured it was time to go. Had a, had a few political issues going on there that I just wasn't comfortable with. Um, so I've been doing building inspection for well, close to 15 years now. Uh, I've been on the board of directors for the New Hampshire Building Officials Association for the past eight years. I'm currently the vice president of that organization. I was president of the Lakes Region Safety Officials Association for help me out dave five years four five years, years six years i don't know something like that um and it actually looks like i may be coming back on board with that one uh there's covid and whatnot has really interrupted that organization and 
they're looking to get it back up and running stronger. So um, it looks like they may be getting plugged in to do that one as well. Um, and I am very much involved with uh, New Hampshire legislation and moving building codes and safety forward in the state. And I've been doing that for about three years now. Um, so that's me in a nutshell. Well, thank you, Steve. Welcome. Welcome aboard. Look forward to actually meeting you at some point. And uh, as you've probably seen by now, Wolfboro is a fairly busy town. And uh, we'll be keeping you plenty busy, I'd say. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I think we're very fortunate to have Steve here. Thank you, Dave. He, he's OK. He's all right. Yeah. Hey, hey, Matt, aren't you supposed <laughs> to be in Nashua somewhere? Yeah, who's that guy who just said that? Doesn't he? What's his name? Who are you? You know, I, I, I lost, I lost a bit of, a little bit of willpower tonight. You guys allowed him on. No, no. We try to, we try to keep things open to the general public. <laughs> okay, I'll give you that. All right, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Yeah, we'll We'll move on to our next item on the agenda, which is going to be discussion about our our CIP for the years 2021 to 2030. Brad, I had lost power. Did you do the municipal intermunicipal agreement? Yes, Linda, we did. Okay. Yep. We had you. a vote on that. I kind of figured you probably lost power because my lights blinked at the same time that you disappeared. So. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to make sure that. Got it did, yes. Yeah, we did the municipal agreement, and we were still on us here when we were working on the uh, the covenant for uh, Peter Post property. Yeah, I started that. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Mr. Sullivan, are you with us this evening to present okay, and talk to us about the CIP? Brad. This is Kathy Barnard. Let me just uh, make a few introductory remarks. Can you hear me? Sure. Okay. Yes, we can. Okay, I'm here on behalf of the planning board uh, to submit to you the 2021 to 2030 capital improvement program. The planning board approved the uh, CIP uh, last night at their meeting. Uh, as you know, this is an advisory plan uh, prepared yearly uh, to serve as a guide uh, for you folks, the Board of Selectmen and the Budget Committee uh, during the uh, 2021 budget discussions. Uh, the plan was uh, developed by the Planning Board's uh, CIP Committee after discussions with the Town Manager and Department Heads. And I, I want to uh, thank the Department Heads and uh, Jim, the Town Manager, Matt Sullivan, who does all the heavy lifting, and then the uh, uh, members of the committee, uh, Paul O'Brien uh, from the Board of Selectmen, Linda Murray is the alternate uh, for uh, you folks, Bob Holman from the Budget Committee, Mike Carter from Planning Board, and uh, three citizen representatives, Paul Whalen, uh, Chuck Sumner, and Suzanne Ryan for all of their valuable input. Uh, this 10-year plan is recommended for municipal projects over $100,000. Uh, the projects are uh, spread out considering the needs of the town uh, and the impact on the taxpayers. Uh, also included in the plan are several capital reserve accounts uh, which again uh, considered the impact on the taxpayer by uh, adding yearly uh, to these accounts and is hope that hope, hope that this will lessen the burden. There's a list of the uh, 2022 Horizon project to be considered next year uh, is in the plan. Also, uh, a spreadsheet at the end of the document, which you all have includes all of the known uh, major town projects and uh, spread out over a 10-year period. And this is hopefully is going to help uh, in your budget discussions for uh, uh, 2021 and into the future. And so I'm going to turn this over to uh, Matt at this point. Thank you. 
Thank, Thank you, you, Kathy. Kathy. I, I appreciate, oh, sorry, Brad. Uh, appreciate that introduction. And, and I think Cap, uh, Kathy captures a lot of the background about the CIP quite well. Uh, for the record, I'm Matt Sullivan, Director of Planning and Development. Uh, sort of. Um, and I wanted to go through a brief uh, review of this document with you this evening. And I, I want to emphasize brief as last evening, I did review the document with the planning board and it took me about 35 minutes to do so. So what I'd like to do is an abbreviated review this evening with you, uh, particularly because two members of the board, uh, Paul and Linda were directly involved in the process. And then Brad has already heard a more detailed version of the presentation. Um, but I do want to review it in some level of detail for, for Dave and Dave as well. Um, each year, the planning board works diligently through the Capital Improvement Program Committee and the members of that committee to prepare the 10-year Capital Improvement Plan uh, for review by the Board of Selectmen and ultimately the Budget Committee as well. And obviously, this is intended to be a long-term planning document for scheduling larger capital improvements. And as Kathy noted, it does, particularly in recent years, include smaller expenditures that might be part of larger phase projects and also expenditures uh, that will be appropriations to capital reserve accounts ranging from uh, the Abenaki Capital Reserve, which is very small, all the way up to uh, larger capital reserve accounts that we know to exist today. Uh, this planning document is obviously provided, uh, intended to provide um, some level of predictability to capital project planning, uh, not only in the upcoming budget year, but also for the 10 year period in front of the board and in front of the budget committee. Um, our intent is to provide some sort of level funding strategy for all of those years, but obviously in Wolfboro's plan, particularly. Um, we do recognize that there tends to be more accurate picture of the upcoming budget constraints in both the upcoming year and the second horizon year, as Kathy referred to it. Uh, this year, like any year, the CIP committee worked diligently with the department heads to bring forward complete proposals. Um, I want to emphasize the fact that uh, this year there was a heavy involvement with the town manager. All proposals were reviewed by the town manager prior to coming to the capital improvement program committee. And I believe that created a high level of uh, value and buy-in with the projects and ultimately uh, rep, uh, led to a lot of these projects being supported as part of the process. In fact, all were recommended for 2021. Um, you're familiar with the format of the plan with the spreadsheet documents, but one thing that is new to the process this year is that the planning board had provided guidance to the CIP uh, asking for them to take a vote on all of the upcoming year projects, in this case being the 2021 year projects. Uh, specifically, the board asked the committee to render a recommend or not recommend vote for all upcoming year projects to give really an indication of what the feeling was of the committee to the board of selectmen and the budget committee. Uh, I think I can speak for uh, the CIP that there was some feeling that in the narrative in the CIP spreadsheet documents, a lot of the texture of the discussion around these projects that was often reflected in the minutes did not ultimately get to uh, those two decision making bodies. In an effort to more effectively communicate a lot of that discussion, the recommend or not recommend vote gives a sense of what the committee ultimately felt about the project after its deliberations. Uh, as you'll see in the end, all the projects were recommended, you, were recommended um, but once you look at the narrative document, you'll see that there was, there was some level of discourse on many of the projects, whether it be a three, two, one vote, uh, a four, one, one vote. Uh, there was some level of disagreement in some cases, but. When asked to vote, the committee members were asked to take into account three specific factors, a project's urgency, a project's need, and a project's relationship to the master plan, which is really the critical foundational piece of the CIP document as it's done by the planning board. I would note that many of the budget figures and even the project scopes presented in the plan are preliminary. As you're aware, in many cases, this is the first that these projects have seen the light of day. Uh, in some cases, that's not um, the case. Uh, but in many in many instances, it is. So these numbers will be refined, even those in 2021 and the project scopes may be refined as they go through the budget committee and obviously the board selectman process prior to that. But this is the first crack at these projects that we've had. Um, again, I think the document speaks largely for, for itself. But what I'd like to do quickly is just review the proposed 2021 projects, uh, review not necessarily the project scope, but the proposed budget figure whether or not the committee recommended it. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions I go, as I go through it. Obviously, if there are specific questions related to these proposals, I would defer those to either uh, department head or the town manager if he's able to speak about it. But many of these have uh, details to them that I'm not going to discuss this evening. Um, I would recommend as I review this that you follow along on this colored CIP spreadsheet that was included within your packet. 
I'll go through that sequentially and I'll sort of skip from uh, through the narrative directly to them. So to start off, the Municipal Electric Department has one substantial project or one project proposed in the 2021 year that you're aware of already. And that is the uh, what I'll refer to as an overage on the existing phase uh, five voltage conversion. Uh, obviously, you're aware that there were some uh, overages on that project that Barry conveyed to the board based on labor and uh, just general escalation associated with the costs. As a result, the proposal is to ask for $1.85 million through the warrant process, I believe. And ultimately, the decision will be made in the coming months about whether or not that request will be a bonded or cash project based on uh, financing, the health of the existing fund. Uh, but regardless of that funding mechanism, that $1.85 million dollar project will be in front of you and that's all for the electric department in 2021 you can see there are other projects coming in 2022 involving uh, submarine feeders cables uh, that sort of thing that you'll see coming in the horizon year the next element of the spreadsheet involves the public works vehicle capital reserve i'd note first that uh, based on expected escalation and need for new equipment we are proposing a five a 50 sorry a five thousand dollar increase in the capital reserve contribution for the 10 year period. So it goes from $180,000 proposed in the 2021 year out to uh, in the 2030 year, $225,000. Uh, however, with that escalation, the funding balance remains healthy in the account and the expected expenditures that will be needed from the account are possible based on, again, that escalation. Um, in 2021, you'll see that specifically there are $80,000 worth of expenditures proposed out of the account, one for the replacement of HD1 and the second for the replacement of the trash compactor. One of the things that's important to understand, and, and you know well, but for the public's purposes, um, the proposed contribution to the capital reserve does not always match up with the proposed expenditure. This is a case where we're contributing $180,000, but only $180,000 are scheduled to come out. Whereas if you look at the 2024 year, um, we'll be contributing $195,000 for the plan but the expenditures are expected to be $340,000 total. And we'll have the cash balance available in that capital reserve to actually move forward with that expenditure at that time. Moving into probably one of the meatier sections of the plan, the Public Works Highway section. There are several projects proposed in 2021. The first of which is engineering for the Crescent Lake and Pine Street sidewalk project that Dave Ford will be coming to you to talk about. And again, that's design and engineering for that project. The second project is design and engineering, sort of the final phase of design and engineering, build, building upon the Bay Street sidewalk stakeholder outreach that was done uh, last year. And that's $55,000 of design and engineering money in 2021. The port wetland drainage and beach upgrades. This is a substantial and the most substantial stormwater project uh, coming before uh, the voters, hopefully in 2021. It's uh, this year's Cary Beach, if you will. It's the largest element of our stormwater upgrade portfolio that will be moving forward. It also represents a partnership between uh, the Port Wetland Association and the town to deal with a substantial, drain substantial drainage issue that exists in that location. Uh, Dave Ford has developed a conceptual BMP design for that area that will be shared with the board as you go through the process. But the capital request for this year is $250,000. Because of the complexity of the site, uh, the scope of the improvement that's necessary, there is a substantial capital need to fund this, but it is a critical project for water quality. A couple projects subsequent to that, the Railroad Avenue layout that you're aware of will be coming before you for $100,000 to do survey, um, some parcel shifting work, and also some upgrade work. The Building Maintenance Capital Reserve Fund, which has a very prescribed schedule of improvements for this year, is coming forward to you at $75,000. The Annual Road Maintenance and Upgrade Budget, uh, is proposed to be $950,000 and then escalated a cost of $50,000 annually for the 10-year period of the plan. And this year in 2021, there's a specific, a very specific level of, uh, sorry, specific set of improvements that are proposed. Those are detailed in the narrative document. And then lastly, or not lastly, but um, two dock projects coming, uh, dock area projects, if you will, coming forward to the board. The first of which is phase two of the dock upgrades or, or repairs. Um, and that's proposed for $250,000 in 2021. And then the second piece is phase one of, of two phases for the dockside parking lot upgrade. Uh, we have just received preliminary plans for that upgrade project that will be coming to the Board of Selectmen in time here. Um, the proposal at this point in time is to do a phased project focusing on specific sections of the parking lot. But I want to be careful about how much I say here because I am actually 
a bit out of this conversation at this point in time. So I believe there may be a refined proposal coming forward to you in the future. So I apologize if I have some of those details incorrect. Water sewer, uh, the water department specifically has a, uh, a, a proposal to shift retiring debt service away from uh, the water fund and, and make a um, a one-for-one -one contribution to the water resource or the water capital reserve that was created by the selectmen, I believe, two years ago. Again, as you see debt service retiring into the out years of the CIP, you see a corresponding contribution going to that capital reserve that will be used to fund improvements to both the water plant and other infrastructure as needed. Obviously, the board of selectmen are the agents to expend for that capital reserve. So ultimately, any projects that need to come out of it will come before you for your review. The second project is part of really a, a larger project, including road, sewer, and water, but that is upgrades to the water main on park and high water mains on park and high street. Uh, these are small linear sections of road, but with very uh, challenging topographic conditions and uh, very poor infrastructure condition as they exist today. Um, this is one that the CIP uh, grappled a bit with, particularly because of the length of the road and sort of the, the overall size of the project. However, ultimately, the criticality of the project, I think, rose this, uh, brought this project to the top of the list. And ultimately, the CIP did recommend that $350,000 to make the necessary upgrades to the, the water line on both Park and High Street. I'll just jump to the, the correspond, the other piece of that project. It's on page two of the spreadsheet. That is the High Street sewer upgrade. Again, a similarly complex effort uh, requiring a $200,000 a contribution that's proposed to come out of the general fund. Again, similar conditions there, very poor infrastructure, um, challenging topography, uh, just a lot of conditions that make this costly. And Bay Forward will have a further discussion with you as that warrant article gets developed in front of the board of selectmen. Now, one other item that I do wanna point out though, at the bottom of page one of the spreadsheet, and this will be a, a very substantial conversation, particularly in the context of the recent pump station issue that uh, the town had, uh, Day Forward is proposing to come forward with a, a uh, sort of a multi-funding source project to repair and replace the existing sewer pump stations that the town has. Um, in 2021, what he's proposing to do is allocate or request $100,000 to do design and engineering work to ensure that we have an accurate cost estimate and that we have an accurate budget figure moving forward to uh, the voters and ultimately the Board of Selectmen in 2022. I would also point out that this is a great example of a project that went through, I believe, three iterations in front of the committee. Uh, Dave Ford had initially proposed this project in 2021, but through further discussion with the town manager and the department head directly about the situation, it was ultimately decided that in order to limit the burden on the taxpayer, but also respect the criticality and need of this project, it was best to shift the engineering request to 2021 and move out the 22 the the uh, overall construction project to 2022, so we can also secure additional funding sources for that work. Moving on to page two, several other smaller projects within the sewer department. Now, uh, the wastewater treatment plant asset management plan grant is a grant that's already um, been in the works, and that's no cost to the taxpayer, but it is an asset management planning grant that Dave Ford, I believe, not sure if this has formally been awarded yet, but we do believe that the funds are are in hand. Additionally, uh, there's a proposal to continue the capital reserve contribution to the wastewater treatment plant capital reserve, but also to, uh, and I'll use this term carefully, but uh, request um, sort of makeup funding for the year that was not funded last year. You may remember that in 2020, uh, ultimately the wastewater treatment plant capital reserve was one of the projects that did not uh, make it through the board of select and review process of warrant articles. Their proposal as a result is to increase the contribution in 2021 to $250,000 to make that account whole as a result of the reduction. Additionally, the RIB project is on here at $3.5 million. Um, that is obviously settlement funded and, and you're well aware of the situation through your updates from Dave Ford. Uh, and then the high street sewer upgrade I already reviewed in some detail. Moving to the fire department, this is a, a project that you're also aware of, uh, so I won't go into too much detail, but uh, the ladder truck is obviously a more urgent need uh, this year than it was contemplated in prior CIPs. As a result, this project has been moved to the 2021 year at a request of $1.38 uh, $1 million. Uh, that project will be 
uh, funded through a variety of, of sources, including a lease purchase, the existing capital reserve account, and uh, also trade in from the existing piece of equipment. Uh, ultimately, the objective is to keep some balance available in the capital reserve account, but also uh, to make future purchases uh, possible, but also to limit the impact to the taxpayer, obviously, and hopefully that strategy will be effective moving forward. The dispatch console is similar to the wastewater treatment plant capital reserve account in that in 2021, the department has requested makeup funding for the uh, reduction that took place in the 2020 year. Ultimately, the request to the voters was $50,000 uh, in the 2020 year that was approved, but 100 and, uh, 102 had been requested. So the proposal this year is to request $154,000 uh, to make that capital reserve account whole to ultimately make the purchase of the console possible in the 2023 year. The public safety building, there will be no capital request in the 2021 year. Uh, the direction of the Board of Selectmen was clear to the committee. Uh, that was one of the projects that was presented later in the process. Um, obviously, there's some work from the architecture, site planning, and feasibility side to, to be done there. Uh, we're, we're hopeful and encouraged by the fact that the uh, building committee will step in directly to help uh, certainly staff and, and the public generally come up with a plan that is feasible and acceptable to the taxpayers. We do have existing monies available from the 2020 appropriation, and as a result, the committee felt comfortable not inserting a request for any funds in that 2021 year, but hopefully having a request based on a more accurate cost estimate and plan in the 2022 year. The last uh, section is a bit of a general section, other projects as necessary. The pop whaling being the first, which is obviously a substantial request being put in front of the, the Board of Selectmen, the Budget Committee, and the voters in the 2021 year, we, we hope. Um, there are obviously some substantial issues at the Pop Whale and Ice Arena. This is one of the, or the only facility this year that the CIP committee actually did a full site visit at. Um, there are some substantial issues with the existing roofing system uh, that you're aware of, um, the compressor as it stands today, and also the lack of dehumidification, dehumidification has exacerbated many of the um, infrastructure issues that now plague uh, that particular facility. As a result, the committee supported an expenditure of $850,000 in the 2021 year to make those necessary repairs and make the facility viable moving forward and really uh, address any potential threat of closing the facility. I would note that this is a project that really does require further discussion as far as what the funding source will be. And that was a substantial discussion at the, the committee level. The enterprise fund uh, does present challenges as the sole funding source. Uh, but we did have a discussion about potential debt service reduction based on debt service uh, payoff. And there may be the potential to bring on some, some debt there in addition to maybe a cash expenditure as well. But that's something that the Board of Selectmen will uh, have to grapple with moving into the budget season. Additionally, the CIP supported an increase to the Abenaki Capital Reserve account from $16,750 to $20,000 in order to fund necessary improvements uh, over the next period. Um, and uh, just for stability, we included that $20,000 to the 10 year term, although we do expect there may be a need to increase that in the future because it's such a nominal amount. Additionally, the library proposed a generator project to install a standalone generator at the library to ensure that, that facility is able to operate in the event of interruption or service interruption. Uh, while not a specific shelter uh, within the hazard mitigation or emergency operations plan, there is a recognition that that facility is critical, uh, whether it be as a, as a secondary facility for emergency staff to meet or simply to ensure that the, the systems within the, build, the building are able to operate effectively in the event of an outage. Uh, there is a recognition that generators are, um, a, a, a whole, uh, we'd love to have them at all of our municipal, municipal facilities, but certainly there needs to be a discussion about whether or not it is critical to have one here. And that's something that the Board of Selectmen will be discussing in the future. Um, I'm almost done, I promise. I promise to be brief and I haven't been, but the last two projects, um, the first is the capital reserve account contribution uh, for the Libby Museum. That's $100,000 proposed in 2021 based on specific guidance from uh, the Board of Selectmen and the trustees. So that's been proposed in the CIP. And you'll see that in the 2022 year, the construction number there reflects the number uh, that's been presented to the Board of Selectmen. And then lastly, and I'm one that I'm really happy about um, is that the, the CIP committee unanimously supported uh, the creation of a water resources capital reserve fund to allocate funding on an annual basis for design, engineering, permitting, and even construction as necessary for stormwater projects, stormwater planning, 
and water quality efforts. And of course, uh, as needed, the, the important work of the Wolfboro Waters Committee into the 10 year plan. Uh, the proposal is a $25,000 increase to that capital reserve account contribution over the 10 year period of the plan. Uh, but we do have a, uh, a slate of projects proposed in the 2021 year. Uh, and we're confident that the $50,000, we're confident the $50,000 expenditure will cover that. And we're also just really uh, pleased by the fact that there's support for this important contribution to our stormwater infrastructure within the community. Lastly, the total capital project expenditures proposed, and this is an eye popping number, but again, this is the total cost is $10 million uh, roughly in 2021 year. The proposed tax rate impact of that, uh, or total, the gross number that will actually impact the tax rate is $3.695 million. And again, that removes anything that may be settlement funded, may be funded out of an existing capital reserve account, may be grant funded, or anything to that effect. Uh, ultimately, this does line up quite well with prior CIPs. Obviously, this number goes through significant refinement through the Board of Selectmen and the budget review process. Um, but this do does align relatively well with past iterations of the capital plan. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have, uh, but I just want to lastly just thank the CIP committee for its hard work, the planning for ultimate planning board for ultimately adopting this. And I, I hope that this is a, a valuable tool for you as you go through the budgeting process in this year and beyond. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Well. Okay, uh, Brad, can I just add, add yeah. one item uh, that uh, this is on uh, the uh, uh, website, uh, the entire uh, plan and the spreadsheet in case some of the folks that uh, might be tuning into the uh, your meeting tonight are interested in reading about all the projects. And also, I, uh, Matt Sullivan has worked um, so hard on improving the uh, CIP process. And I, I think it's begin it's certainly showing in the documents that um, tonight's document and, and previous ones. Uh, so I, I just want to really thank him for, um, you know, taking the suggestions of the committees and implementing them. And, Believe me, this committee has a, a lot of suggestions. So thank you very much, Matt. And thanks, Brad. Of, of course, Kathy. And I'll just, I, just anecdotally, um, I'm about to get into the CIP at my new uh, spot and they have two CIP meetings total as part of their entire process. So if that gives you any idea of the, the difference in scope, we have about 12 to 15 in Wolfboro, but I think it truly generates a, a very valuable document in the end. So I think that uh, that shows in the product that comes out of it. I'm happy to be a part of it. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Kathy. Board members, do we have any questions or before they go? Thanks, Matt. Okay. Yeah. Again, thank you, guys, very much. A great, you know, great job. Um, great plan, and uh, thanks again. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, next on our agenda, discussion on commercial vessel landing permit fees for 2020. Uh, Mr. Chairman, as you're aware, um, it's been a unique year um, related to COVID-19 and the worldwide pandemic. Um, we only really observed one of the um, commercial vessel units coming in and utilizing the docks. Um, so the question is, um, what is the board's um, opinion with regards to refunding uh, to those commercial, com commercial vessels that did not dock this year, refunding their fee? Is there an ask on the table from these people? At this point, there is not. Um, we feel that um, you know they they were going to be providing a service to the community, and they they pay for that um, space um, and being um, good neighbors with these individuals. We felt that you know they were not able to create the revenue that they normally do through this um, 
opportunity and we, we felt it um, important to be able to help them out. I just, you know, I'll just say when I read through this stuff like that, you know, my, you know, my thought is that we should go through with this, um, you know, be good, you know, stewards of the town and, and you know, and, and have our facility down there. Um, that they, you know, do donate. It's not a lot of money and stuff here, but like you said, Jim, they weren't able to, you know, produce the revenue for their businesses here that, you know, that they run these ships for. So. Um, I would be in favor myself of you know reimbursing these three um, groups here their their uh, fees that they paid to the town. Anybody else have any comments or thoughts? I agree with you, Brad. Are you making that a motion, or you want me to? Well, let's see if anybody is. I don't know. I haven't heard from Linda yet. If she, I can't see her yet. Does she? Yeah, Paul, you had another comment. Yeah, I, I agree that uh, uh, it's either a refund or a credit to the future uh, purchase. I mean, one or the other. Uh, if there had, and the reason I asked if there's been an ask, I mean, if somebody says I need a check, then we probably should do that. But if somebody, if if, if it would make sense for us to not write a check, but to say we're just going to credit your uh, your 2020, whatever the next year is. Oh my God! It can't be 2020. 2021. Uh, we could do that. I, I'm ambivalent uh, either way. Can you hear me? Yes, Linda. Go ahead. Okay. All right. I'm driving from one house to the other house because the other house has a generator. But I think we should give the money back to them yep. this year. I think that's the cleanest way to do it. Let's move to uh, authorize uh, refunds on the 2020 commercial landing permits as follows: 560 bucks to the New Hampshire Boat Museum, 651.73 to the Winnipesaukee Flagship Corporation doing business as the Mount Washington Cruise, 1300 uh, HCC DBA as a Winnie Bell. I'll second that. Okay, a motion and a second to do the three refunds that uh, Paul just mentioned. Any other discussion? Do a roll call vote. Um, Linda, if you're driving, can hear us. Have your vote. Yes. Yes. Paul? Yes. Dave Senecal? Yes. Dave Bowers? Yes. And Brad votes yes also. All right. Thank you, everybody. Right, do I have it right on our amended agenda that we're not going to have a discussion about the political campaign signs or is that still on our agenda no that's off uh to another week okay all right so the next one on our agenda then is going to be discussion for the henry f libby estate libby museum annual filing so this was a an interesting one um we received some correspondence um requesting um the documents associated with the annual filing um to the state department of justice um what we discovered is this hadn't been done since 2012. um i really have to thank amy for this she took the ball on this um worked with department of justice worked with attorney puffer um worked with Paul O'Brien is the chairman of the trustee, and we really got this uh, cleaned up so that we can uh, be in compliance with the estate um, moving forward. Uh, with that stated, Paul, if you've got anything further you'd like to discuss about it, I would gladly hand it to you. Well, first things first, uh, Amy is the hero here, uh, and there, there's no question about that. So we appreciate that help. You're exactly right. Um, we haven't filed uh, our returns with the charitable or trust organization for you know nine years i guess is the right number there are penalties if you don't do this thank goodness we're not going to get any penalties um we are filing uh, an annual report uh, actually tomorrow or maybe today amy probably has it out the door today knowing her uh, but we are uh, asking for extensions on the prior years 
uh, because there is a little bit of hunting and pecking that has to be done to dig up the uh, uh, the prior year's information. We're going to put a uh, Amy is uh, ensuring, and we all need to ensure that we put a reminder in the diary that at the end of the year we have to file the end reports because we're running a museum, and we have a trust obligation to do that. So. Um, uh, we'll do that. And uh, I also think Jim, uh, Jim and I talked about it. We might want to ask our auditor, is this something that uh, we should try to see if we can catch uh, through our audit process to see uh, see if this is something an auditor may have picked up or not picked up. Anyways, uh, uh, thank you, Amy, for what you do. And I think uh, we're going to get ourselves in good shape. And I apologize. I think we all should apologize for not filing those returns for the uh, 10 years past. Thank you, Paul. So I think we're all set there moving forward and hopefully everything is ironed out and we stay on track there. Yes. Okay, we've had our discussion on Halloween. So our next item is uh, other business. Do we have any other business before us this evening we'd like to bring up? I have some other business, uh, if anybody else does. <laughs> Okay, Paul, I do, but I'll let you do yours first. Thank you, Linda. I have two items, Mr. Chairman. Hopefully they're brief. Uh, one is just a continuation of the conversation on the Libby. In the capital improvement document, there is a sentence uh, uh, under the Libby that speaks to the words, um, oh, heck, I had it here. It speaks to the words that, uh, that the Libby could the larger amount that we I'll find it. Long story short, uh, the uh, the, uh, the Wolf World Board of Selectmen voted uh, to authorize a capital campaign of $2.3 million. That is the plan of record for the Libby. Um, and I don't know how this happened. I think it might have been paper flying back and forth. Uh, but somehow in the CIP form, it says it is possible that the original construction scope may be considered meaning the 2.9 million, uh, if substantial private funds are made available at that time. Just so that we're clear, the plan of record for the Libby is 2.3 million. That is what the Wolf World Board of Selectmen voted on, uh, I think it was 16 September uh, to do. The second uh, item I wanna bring to the, uh, to the committee's attention, and it's, um, um, it's not a trivial matter, but it's something I think is important for you all to know about. Every now and again, the Federal Communications Commission sends out questions for public input. Those things are called notice of proposed rulemaking or uh, are what are also called NOIs. Uh, these, are, these are important questions that are asked of the public businesses associations. Adequate time is always provided, normally 60 days, sometimes 90 days. These are important issues. Um, uh, we are members of the Carroll County Broadband Committee. A member of the Carroll County Broadband Committee uh, filed uh, a brief with the Federal Communications Commission and then communicated that filing to the members of the Carroll County Broadband Committee after the brief had been filed. There were no drafts circulated. There was no stakeholder input. Uh, there was no public input. Uh, the rationale for the uh, filing was that they were at a deadline, which uh, very honestly is not, uh, that doesn't pass the sniff test. Uh, the actual pleading itself is something that the town of Wolfboro would not have agreed to. It's not egregious, it's not heinous, but very honestly, it's not something we would agree to. And very honestly, uh, the town of Wolfboro uh, selectmen, you, you gave me the duty to represent you folks making sure that anytime we created policy documents, that you'd have a bite on the apple. We didn't get a bite on the apple. I've asked to have that pleading removed, our name removed, and I'm getting a, a lawyer's answer that says we can't, and I don't believe in we can'ts. Um, so uh, the best way to, uh, to do this and to get the pleading removed is for the town of Wolfboro uh, to set itself aside as a member of the Carroll County Broadband Committee. I intend to write a letter uh, to the uh, chairman. He knows it's coming. 
uh, one, of, one of the things I think is really important for us is rules of procedure. You expect us and we expect the public to get input on these things. And when we're writing policy documents that are going to the FCC about things that relate to uh, our future in, in this community, I, I, I very strongly believe that we should not uh, uh, do anything but have uh, the opportunity to read a draft, discuss it amongst ourselves, and then uh, give input. So my advice is that uh, I'm gonna send them a letter I'm going to, uh, uh, and I'm going to temporarily set ourselves aside so that they're given the opportunity to remove uh, the town of Wolf Row from the pleading. Those are my updates uh, on other business, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Paul. Linda, you had something you wanted to bring up? Yes, I do, as I try to get reconnected here. Well, yeah, there uh, she you first are. of all, I wanted to... <laughs> here I am, one house to another. <laughs> Thank goodness they're not too far apart. Um, we talked at the last budget hearing on uh, the possibility of doing budget hearings all virtual, and we were going to speak to it tonight, and I didn't know whether uh, this was an appropriate time to take a, to talk about that. Yep, exactly. I was going to bring it up if you didn't, so go ahead. Um, I My feeling is... It, being there in person and having it on the screen was very difficult for us at the town hall to hear. And I would like to have all of our meetings, budget meetings, uh, virtual. It'll be easier for our department heads. We'll hear each other better. The difference between what, how we hear and can communicate in a virtual meeting and what happened at the town hall are worlds apart. So that's my recommendation. I'm going to agree with you on that, Linda. You know, I was obviously yeah, I there with you on that. that. But it was very that. difficult. You have to look at the, at the regular you meeting. Me? You have to look backwards and try to figure out what's happening. It's much easier this way. Yeah, Linda, we can still hear you. Um, I agree, too. I, you know, I was there with you. It was very difficult to, to hear um, with the echo and everything in there. Some reason it doesn't seem as bad at our planning board meetings because we have more people in there. It muffles it a little bit better, absorbs the the echo. But uh, it was very difficult. I thought Monday night. So um, I I'm in agreement. I think we should move on to virtual for the rest of these. Anybody else have a comment? Yeah, I'll agree with that. I was there and everything seemed very muffled. It was very hard to uh, hear anything. Yeah. Yeah, this is so Paul. Do you need a motion, with, or can we just decide? I agree, to with, go I agree with it as well. Right. Um, and I just, I'd ask, and I think Timothy's working on this. I don't know whether we have a tech issue here, a rebroadcasting thing, and I don't want him to weigh in necessarily here at the meeting. But we got to hear from Timothy because if we if we need to have hybrid meetings, and the quality is just uh, you know cruddy, that doesn't scale. So we got to get a solution here. Um, and uh, Tim, I think, is working on that. But uh, yeah, if you need a motion, uh, Mr. Chairman, or whatever. I don't think so. I think we can, you know, just with uh, kind of a consensus of the board here, I think, uh, you know, Mr. Pino can uh, set these up in our next agendas to be a virtual meeting. I, I don't mm -hmm. think we need to have a motion on that. We all seem to agree with it. So. Cool. That sound good? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I will uh, schedule with Beverly. Um, all of our, our IT person, I will schedule all these meetings to be virtual as you have requested. Okay, cool. I have another okay. one, Brad. Yeah, I received hey. the history of the EDC using minutes from 1991 through 2020 from the alternate member of the uh, uh, Economic Development Camp. Um, committee and I have sent that uh, to the town manager I know he's been busy I would like that sent out to the rest of you um, because there were recommendations that this alternate had for the board of selectmen and I think we all should at least have read it uh, it came to me and to the head of the economic development committee and it's he wanted to do rules of procedures for the committee and I would like to suggest that the Board of Selectmen 
take their rules of procedure, make some adaptions, um, and have it as kind of the, um, the, the rules of procedure for the committees of the town, excluding those that are um, under RSAs, like your planning board, your ZBA, your conservation commission. It's our regular standing committees. And what I was hoping that you'd give me permission to work with uh, Amy and take our procedures, do a draft, and to bring it back to the committee, uh, to the board uh, next meeting to take a look at, if that makes sense to everybody. So, Linda, is that actually the point of the all this? No, there's all sorts of stuff in there. That. Okay. But I think one of the things he, he wanted to do was write rules of procedure. And I think that's really the Board of Selectmen's job to do that in, in relation to, to what we as a board use as rules of procedure. But everybody should just read it. Um, he's got some points, he's got some recommendations. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, it's information from me to the rest of the board on what he said. Okay. Yeah, I am. Okay. I didn't hear you, Linda. I just asked oh, no, whether please. everybody was comfortable with me taking the Board of Selectmen's uh, procedures and Amy and I work to see if we can do a blanket one for committees. Okay, Paul. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I will do that. Linda? Yeah. We have anything else under uh, other business? No, nope, that does me. We're all set. Seeing none, we'll move on to committee reports. Uh, Dave Seneca, why don't we start with you? Well, the only thing I've been doing the same as the rest of you is budgets. <laughs> <laughs> haven't had any. Uh, so enthusiastic about it, Dave. Committee meeting. <laughs> yeah. Well, who's next? Paul. Oh, me? Paul, you are. Yep, CIP budgets, uh, Carroll County Broadband Committee, um, and other assorted uh, things around broadband. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, I joined uh, Paul for some of those uh, CIP meetings. I also went to the meeting on the Lake Winnipesaukee report on their asset management plan for Winter Harbor and sections of Mol Moultonboro Bay, and I found that very interesting. The Special Events Committee is firming up uh, its virtual program, and we'll start doing some fundraising for this year's Last Night Wolf Girl. I was on the panel that interviewed candidates for the Assistant Park and Rec Director. And I'm mm -hmm. very pleased to say she had a good pick of candidates, and I think she is zeroing in on her candidate. Today, I attended a meet and greet at the Hope House uh, Families in, in Transition to meet the new executive director, uh, Maria Devon. Um, she is taking uh, over the, the organization from um, Maureen Beauregard. She come to our board. Uh oh. Am I the only one that give us some information? about uh, how House and Families Transitions transition. I also attended a meeting of leaders doing. I also, um, to talk uh, with the board of 68 of permanent space. They have moved a number of times in the hospital times, but it's available to bring sleep location. And that's all I have. Thank you, Linda. Dave uh, Bowers, we're on committee reports. Do you have anything for us tonight? 
Uh, no committee reports. All right, thank you. Um, I had a uh, last week we had our Friends of Libby Museum. We had our annual meeting. It was done by virtual on Zoom. Um, I thought it was pretty interesting. It went well, and they produced a uh, a video of Dr. Libby uh, coming back into the museum in today's time frame, and it was you know he, uh, Dr. Libby was played by Fred Fernald. I uh, did a tremendous job on it. It's well worth seeing. Um, if you guys haven't seen it yet, um, I think it can be seen through Wolfboro Community TV, um, either on YouTube or they can, I'm sure we can get a copy of it or something like that, but it's very entertaining and, uh, you know, uh, Fred did a tremendous job with that. It was, it was well done. Um, planning board meeting last night, we had a uh, boundary line adjustment and, uh, and then we had a, uh, a boathouse come in for, uh, for an approval on that. And obviously Monday night we were all together as a group to review the parks and rec department budget. So that was it for me. Uh, Mr. Pinio, town manager's report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, budgets, that's been a uh, huge focus. Um, we are, we, we today and tomorrow, uh, the auditors are in-house. Um, our former finance director, Pete Chamberlain, uh, has gotten the 2019 books to a point where the auditors can come in and finish the 2019 audit. Um, they did have a very brief conversation with Tim Green this morning. Uh, he's shooting for the second Board of Selectmen's meeting in November to be able to give the presentation as to the budget status, or, or excuse me, the audit status. Um, there's multiple projects that are uh, buttoning up. Uh, if you have an opportunity, um, please go down to the boat launch at the Libby. Um, the the seawall has been completed, um, and it looks fantastic. Um, Belknap Landscaping did an exceptional job, um, and people really should take an opportunity to go down and look at that thing. It, it's well done. Uh, I know Dave Ford is buttoning up some of his projects for the year. Um, I'll be reaching out to Dave to give you a capital um, project update um, in the very near future. Uh, and next Tuesday, um, I'll be meeting with uh, Chris Pappas um, to talk about um, potential shovel ready projects um, and see if there could be some stimulus money coming down the pike, um, or at least to be able to let him know that we are in the market for it um, based on. What you just observed based on our asks coming forward regarding CIP, there's a lot there. Um, well, Jim, you're meeting with the congressman, isn't that right? That is correct. That's pretty awesome, dude. That is correct. So um, with that said, um, just continuing to plug away, um, and I'll hand it back to you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Pinio. Um, questions from the press. Melissa, are you here with us this evening still? I am, I am, hanging in there. Um, so I will circle back to Mr. Pinio, I think about Halloween planning in another week and find out what route has been established. And that's going to be, you're gonna work on that with the fire department and you'll have that. Week yeah, it's already, I already sent an email to the two chiefs um, saying that what we're looking at and that I'm probably going to be, we'll be putting them in contact with the Shannons and I'm probably going to circle around with them on Tuesday um, to see where we're at and get going. Okay, that sounds good because I do want to be able to publicize it. Um, okay, uh, the other question I had was um, you had your two committees, public safety and doc committees, and you agreed they would be ad hoc rather than long standing. Um, but you figured the public safety committee probably would be a little bit longer term. Um, are you uh, taking away all those term specifics? That's gone? Okay. Yes, way those two year right. terms that were listed on the agenda, uh, right? You're not gonna do that, okay. Thank you. And the people at public safety, it could be in perpetuity. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're on this committee. 
Thanks, okay. thanks Alyssa. All right. Okay, next on our agenda is our second round of uh, public input. Anybody out there with us still that would like to speak? Seeing nobody out there, I'd entertain a motion to go into uh, non-public. Mr. Chairman, I'll move we go into non-public. Second. A motion and a second to go to non-public. Have a roll call vote. Uh, Paul? Yes. Dave Seneca? Yes. Dave Bowers? Yes. Uh, Brad Harriman, yes. And Linda Murray, are you still with us? Yes. Okay. But a yes is a vote, so. Yes. All right. We'll go into non-public. Yes, here, just going to lock up. Yep, we will stay in this room. I'm going to kick everybody out and lock us down. 